Good afternoon to all of my love bugs. Come on in. Um, what we're going to do today is we are going to be revamping the first piece of mosaic art that I ever did. I did this back in May of 2012. So um, get comfortable. I know this is a little bit different than our normal workspace, but I had to figure out a solution because of the fact that I don't have much space. I don't have much counter space where my little, I call my little workspace, which is one of my cat, uh, countertops. So get something to drink, get comfortable. We are going to revamp this mirror and we are going to have a good conversation. Um, if my videos, you like my videos, and I know some have expressed they don't like the talking, then maybe you want to just speed through certain parts. Um, because this is the video where I will actually tell you how 40 pieces of meat came about. Uh, so I'm going to work through the entire video, but uh, we're going to have a conversation. First thing that I'm going to do, all you'll need is mixed grout. I mixed a little paint in it because I didn't want it to be white or gray and I wasn't going to uh, spend money to buy new grout. Um, so I mixed a little chocolate paint in it. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this frame um, from the actual remove the mirror from the frame and then we'll start working from there. Okay. So what I have done now, I've actually um removed the frame from it. Um, this was a mirror that I purchased back in 2012. I wanted to show you this to see if we could get get close up on it. If we could, if I could get it, this was how much this mirror cost from Hobby Lobby. Right, this is when I first saw the guy. I knew about Hobby Lobby, but I wasn't in Hobby Lobby like I am now. And that's how I became so acquainted with Hobby Lobby is because I had moved to Atlanta and then I needed to got to take off my flops. Yeah, I don't do too much exercising. So you probably can hear I'm breathing a little hard. I already mixed up the grout. I just mixed up chocolate in there. And so it's just like real, like it almost looks like chocolate ice cream. This is going to be one of the easiest grouts that we do because it's such large spaces. We already know I don't have to put it all over the mirror. Um, we're not going to put it all over the edges the, uh, to the very end because it has to go back in the frame. And I wasn't at first, I didn't really have to take it out of the frame, but the reason that I took it out of the frame because I decided if we revamping, we revamping. If we start life over, we start life over. And I'm going to uh, spray that frame. So that was my reason for actually taking it out of the frame. Because we're going to revamp the entire mirror. Well, I purchased this mirror a lot of times uh, since I started YouTube. Or just over the years with my social media or um, me doing artwork, people will often say, well, how did you come up with the name um, Pieces of Me? Um, you may see some stuff that say Pieces of Me. You may see it say 40 Pieces of Me. Well, quite often they want to know, well, how did you come up with that? Well, the video that I did the other morning, I advised, advised that this was not anything that I did to get likes on social media or um, anything of that nature. This was 40 pieces of me was me finding out who I was at 80, at, at 40 years old. Uh, that I went through a lot of things and 40 years old is when I really found out who I was. So um, that's where the, the 40 came from. Um, but to give you a little background, 
And I, you can see I'm working why, because I, I know we have some that they don't like the long videos, but I'm working the entire time that I'm talking. So I moved to Atlanta, Georgia, and I moved there um, with my ex, um, not my ex-husband, a guy that I had been dating on and off for years. And I moved there with him. And um, I just moved at first. All of my kids were, uh, my son had his own thing going on. And my oldest, which is my niece, who I raised since a very young age. And she's now 28. So she was in her 20s. The only one left was baby girl. And she was going to finish school out in North Carolina. But long story short, I moved to Atlanta, Georgia, because I was going to be with my man. And I wasn't going to keep, I wasn't going to continue to be in the streets and date all these different guys and date them for money. Let's be honest, because this is a tell the truth video. That's what we're going to call it, tell the truth. So I was going to start trying to live a productive life. I had given my life to Christ a couple of years ago, uh, prior to that in 2009, but I still just couldn't get it right. So long story short, I stopped doing what I was doing and he said he wanted to be with me and I decided I was going to get another job and I got a job at the bank and I got that job in a matter of seven days. Did not go to Atlanta to do an interview or anything. I did all three interviews for this particular bank over the phone and the first time these people had ever seen me was when I arrived to work on the date that I was supposed to report. So I packed up everything. I got my girl situated in an apartment and uh, Chloe was going to stay until school was out and she was gonna stay with her big cousin slash sister because that's how they had been raised. And you know, I was gonna start life and come back and get Chloe and I visited some, but come back and get her to move her when school was out. Well, we know things don't always work out that easy because from the first day that I got there, things weren't worth what they had appeared uh, before I moved there. Um, my Prince Charming, he wasn't so charming. Um, he was not abusive to me physically, uh, but he was not nice to me. And long story short, I started to suspect some things. I didn't suspect it was a, and I'll never tarnish anybody's um, relationship, tarnish anybody's character or anything of that nature. So I never ever say names. Um, I am in the process of writing a, a book, which this has been for about two years and I just procrastinated and I finally slowed down. So this is not anything that this person doesn't know or anything of that nature. But um, I started to put two and two together that I might have been a cover-up. And I wasn't a cover-up for another woman. And we'll just leave it like that. Um, I asked. I never got the answers. But things just weren't pleasant. And all the signs led to that I wasn't truly uh, what this man desired. And maybe the eight years that I had dealt with this man that the reason why we never could get it together is because I wasn't what he truly desired. I fit along with the picture, but I wasn't what he truly desired. Um, and we can leave that like that. Um, we know a lot of things happen in anywhere you live, but in Atlanta, a lot of things sometimes do happen. Um, I want to state that I don't judge anybody for the decisions that you make. And I still don't hate him to this day. I don't have any communication with him. He'll text me every now and then and we just let it be that. But um, I don't hate this person because we have to be held accountable for the decisions that we make. Um, but I realized what I was going, the life that I was going to live that wasn't the life that he desired to live. Um, just going to be honest about it. It appeared that my man would rather have a man than to be with me. Yeah, shocker, right? We always read about it. We hear about it. But we never, ever think that it is going to happen to us. 
Um, so after being there for probably about a month, I went from sleeping in a bedroom to sleeping on the couch. And uh, things were real, real shaky. And they got shakier and shakier as, shakier as um, the months went on. So I knew that the life that I had thought I was going to live, that wasn't going to happen. So I had to start coming up with another plan. And that, uh, that plan was to get my own place. It's hot in here. I think I need to change my filters out. And I'm going to have to. I wasn't leaving out the house today. Um, but I think I am going to have to do that. But anyway, I knew that I was going to have to um, do some things different than what I anticipated when I first started planning this move uh, for this man that, that came to North Carolina and told my aunt and uncle that, you know, he wanted to marry me and he just couldn't see life without me. And he probably couldn't because I probably could still go back to this very day, but um, I just would have to have an understanding about what he truly wanted and desired. So, to speed things up, I started looking around, and of course, I had given everything to my oldest. So, I didn't own anything except two TVs and my clothing, my belongings. That was my worldly possessions. A girl that had dated a lot of men and had been given a lot of nice things, I no longer own any of those fancy things that I had. Yeah, those were the pieces of me. Everything that I call myself working for, uh, yeah, working for, notice how I said that, uh -huh. I no longer had those things because I had given them away and I couldn't get them back. So I started going out and collecting things. And that's where Hobby Lobby came into play at. Um, I would go to Hobby Lobby every single day on my lunch break. And I would just look to see what they had. And that's when I discovered that they had the 90% crack. So if it was crack, if it was anything, I would take. But I started going in, and I'll show you the other mirror uh, one day. It's in my bedroom. I started going in every day, but I was admiring this mirror because I was used to having nice things, and I was going to have nice things. And I guess reality had not set in that I was thinking somebody was going to come along and save me once again. Well started kicking in when I started pricing rent in Atlanta and I stayed in the Sandy Springs area um, right in between Roswell and Buckhead and we all know and Dunwoody if you know anything about Atlanta it's it's the downside of, of it but it's still expensive in Sandy Springs it's like you're moving out of Buckhead but you're going to a more uh, family oriented area or area that's less expensive but it's still expensive and then i tried to figure out on my salary with my car payment and a child how am i going to be able to afford this so start kicking in and i wasn't going to be able to afford those nice pieces to go into my little old apartment i already figured out where i was going to move um and this was probably like in in april so every day I would go buy something. I will give him credit. I didn't have any bills to pay. I only paid my car payment and sent most of my check back home to my kids. So I would go to Marshalls and I would lay away stuff. I would go to TJ Maxx and lay away stuff. Uh, go in the Hobby Lobby and buy piece by piece. And I kept looking at this mirror and this lady, older ladies, they actually eventually became, like I would say, <laughs> fairy godmothers. And she said, you come in here every day looking at that mirror, girl. When you gonna buy that mirror? That mirror, girl, when you gonna buy that mirror? And um, I said, well, I can't buy it. I can't afford it. Um, and she said, well, you come in here every day looking at it. And I said, yeah, I said, I want it. One day I'll be able to afford it. And she said, well, I got it in the back and it's $20. And I said, you ain't got that mirror back there for $20. And she said, yes, I do. She said, I got that one and another one that's 
uh, $30. And I said, how is that mirrored at? She said, I'll go get them for you. Come on back here. She brought them to the door. And it was this same mirror that I love. But it had a big old crack in it. And me, being who I am, I was a little offended. Like, how the hell did she, yeah? How is she going to tell me she got the mirror and it's a crack mirror? And the other one had several cracks. It was $400. She said it would be $30. She said that's what I would mark. And I said, well, I can't do anything with that. She said, you come in here and buy all this other broken S-H-I-T, she said, and find stuff to do with it. If it's got a small crack, you will figure it out. She said, you want them or not? She was not out there to play with me. And I said, well, let me think about it while I walk through the store. And then I thought about it before I walked up. I said, yeah, I want them. I said, can I pay for it now and come back and pick it up after work? Because I couldn't even fit it in my little car. So I had to pay for it. And I borrowed his truck. And I went back after work. After work, borrowed his truck. And I went back and I got my broken mirrors. But over the next couple of months, he kept seeing me bring stuff in the house. And he always said he liked the way that I decorated. So he wanted, he thought I was buying that stuff. He didn't think I was serious when I said I was leaving. He thought I was buying that stuff to decorate his apartment. And um, yeah, that wasn't true in real life. So I um, start packing things up and just sticking things in corners and saying, you know, I'm getting myself together and I'm just buying this stuff, just going through the motions, um, trying to ignore the fact that I was one of those stories that I hear about, that the man that I thought cute me, honey, that everybody was wanting. Well, my man didn't want me because my man possibly um, wanted a man. He never would acknowledge it, but he never would deny it. And um, I was a little broke down and um, the different things I continued to see and I had to live there. I um, It bothered me a lot. But I never broke down once and cried about it. Because that just wasn't me. I had to be strong because I had work to do. Well, this one particular, it was Memorial Weekend. About this mirror before Memorial Weekend. Because Memorial Weekend is when I had my epiphany. I was in there. He was gone. I was stuck there. Um, things just was not right. And I was pissed. I finally realized that I had given up all my hustlers that I had that took really good care of me to come move to Atlanta with a man that potentially liked men more than he liked me. And um, that's when it hit home. It hit home that... I was not who I thought I was all of those years. And on top of everything that I had confided in this person, with this person about me going through abuse as a child and mama not really too much caring for me and just I was that last child that she didn't want. And I was thinking all this time, I'm going to have my own. I'm going to have my own family and I won't have to worry about all of that because I'm going to make life for myself. Well, he fooled me too because um, I wasn't all that I thought I was. You know, sometimes when you got a whole bunch of stuff knocking at your door, you don't realize the thing knocking for the right reasons. In this particular day, this mirror was leaned up against the wall, and I looked at the girl that could go shopping any place she wanted to, that her ex-boyfriend had so much money that I ain't even know what to do with it, whether he got it the wrong way or not. I was living. 
I took a camera. I didn't take this mirror outside. I didn't lay this mirror down. I took a hammer while this mirror was sitting up, leaned up against the wall, and I started smashing the hell out of it. And that's how this mirror got cracked. I didn't intend on cracking it in the first place. I was just so pissed off that somebody didn't think enough of me to treat me human once again. Oh, give me a moment. I didn't get no papers out. Once again, somebody thought less of me than who I truly was. And I was pissed off. Yeah. I was really, really pissed off. I'm trying to get that up for you. I'm doing pretty good. I'm trying to be extremely mindful and not make a mess. But yeah, I was pissed off. Because how dare he trick me? Or how dare I trick myself and didn't see the signs? Uh, so I beat this mirror and it was glass pieces all in that man's floor. And um, I cried for hours and hours. And then went to sleep. And when I woke up, I saw that I had a hell of a mess in the floor. And Grabbed the mirror, put on shoes, of course, because I had a mess. And I grabbed the mirror and um, tried to see what I could do. Um, I was manic at that point. And um, to see what could be done with it. And I saw that the back came off. So I initially took the back off. And it was just this board. This a plain cardboard. It's really this board is really really thick. And um I got paint. That acrylic paint that we buy at a Walmart or we sometimes buy it out of Hobby Lobby. And I started painting all of this bright abstract colors on that board. Mirror still in the floor. So still not knowing what I'm doing. Um, the E6000, I had that, I think it was a base. I can't remember what I had for the size of the one. But I took that, I picked up the big pieces of glass, and um, didn't know how I was going to get the little pieces up. I started sweeping it up. Still not knowing, manic, not attached to a family, nobody to call. Yeah, now this is getting to be the part that I always said I didn't know whether I would tell how the 40 pieces of meat came about. Um, It was nobody. I couldn't just leave and come back home because I don't really have a connection with my family. So I don't even know what I'm going to do at this point. All I know is I got a couple of months in order to get things right, because no matter what I've done, I always made sure that I try to allow my kids to live a regular life like other people's, whether daddy's around or family's around. I just wanted them to know that they were like other kids. So I got a couple of months to get things together for when I go pick my daughter up and and I didn't know what I was going to do at that point. That was the first breaking moment that I had where I realized nobody's coming to save me. This time, I'm going to have to depend on God to save me or I'm going to have to save myself. And at that point, I started taking that mirror and gluing it to that board. Something just said, this is going to be a piece of art. I didn't know anything about grout men. And if you notice when I, you see those pictures, you just see the bright colors. That's the paint. I didn't know anything about grout. I didn't know anything about mosaic work. I just knew I had to get that glass up out that man's floor. And um, that I paid my $20 for this mirror. And um, 
needed for it to be something. So when people ask me, where did you come up with 40 pieces of meat? My response is always, when I saw all of that broken glass, that's why my thing is really, really glass. That's why I'm so into glass and I'm so into mirror. Because we are so afraid to break a mirror because we may have bad luck. If you don't have bad luck, you don't have bad luck anyway. It ain't got nothing to do with no mirror. But I always tell people, if I could pick up all of that glass and that mirror that I had laying in that floor and I can put it back together and I can make people look at it and think that it was something that could do the same for me. I could pick up all the broken pieces of me that have continued to break into small and smaller and smaller and smaller pieces over the 40 years of my life. If I can put this mirror back together, then I can put me back together. So that's where I came up with 40 pieces of me. Because each and every piece of this mirror represents part of me that's been broken. Whether it's been through men that didn't care about me and everything ain't a man's fault. Sometimes we bring it on ourselves. We want to live a certain life. We want to be Hollywood and we want all this nice stuff and these nice bags and we don't realize how much of our soul that we're selling. So whether it's been through molestation, whether it's been through rape or whatever medical conditions that you go through, if you can manage to pick up one piece of you, that's hope that you can put yourself back together in entirety. So, today, I no longer want to see these bright pieces because this was me hiding from what I went through. I don't have to hide anymore. God came and he saved me. And I got baptized, and I'm not saying I lived a perfect life. It's far from perfect. But I know the difference now. And I don't have to have all of this to remind me of where I used to be. God doesn't care about where we used to be. He only cares about the now. Once he saves you, you don't have to continue to answer for who you used to be. You only have to be accountable for who you are today. And if you got a lot of broken pieces like I do, don't let anybody tell you that you can't put your Don't let anybody tell you who you can't be, what you can't have. Whatever you want, it's yours for the taking. I am living proof. When I started this channel, I had no idea of where it was going to take me or if it could be healing because everything that I do is still working to make me a better me. But I am so, I was in fear because I fear people so much. I was terrified to even record myself speaking because no matter, sometimes no matter how much we've come along, we're still scared of being judged. And I have to say, this has been the absolute best thing for me because whether I'm doing something correct, incorrect, I can say that my family that I've developed here are very, very supportive. Look at this. After all these years, a piece came up. I guess I need to be a little bit more mindful in how hard I'm actually uh, rubbing. So, what I'm going to do, I am going to get myself together so I don't sound all nasally on here. Uh, and I'm sorry for getting a little emotional, but um, yeah, sometimes when I think about how far I've came and where I'm at now, and it ain't exactly where I want to be, but it's where God would have me to be, it does make you emotional. 
So I am going to finish grouting this and I am going to come back to you um, because we are going to spray the frame as well. Of course, outside, but we're going to spray the frame as well. I um, hope this is something that you will like. Um, if so, I would like for you to, if you've never shared one of my videos or if you've never asked anyone else to watch me, not because of what you think this video that what I'm doing to this mirror is going to turn out great because it may not, it may not be to your liking, but because we know if we're going through something, there's somebody else that has experienced it too. I want you to share this video. I've never asked you to share a video, but I do I want you to share this video because oftentimes we don't know what people are going through behind closed doors. So I want you to do something. If this has nothing at all pertaining to you, I want you to do something else absolutely wonderful for someone else today. I want you to let them know that they are not alone in their fight, that as women, men run across that same situation too. Um, but I want you to help somebody else out so that they don't continue to think that they have to stay in a situation just for finances. It's okay that God will provide. Uh, so that's the only thing that I ask of you today, that if you think you know someone who can benefit uh, from what I went through, I want you to invite them to this channel. Even if you don't invite them to the channel, I want you to send them uh, this video in their inbox. I want you to send this the link to this video to them in their text because we don't know what people are going through sometimes even when they're the best of the best of our friends we sometimes don't know what they're going through that's what i want you guys to do for me today okay so i have the mirror portion grouted and I'm letting that um, dry just a little bit before I start taking the excess off. Um, so what I'm going to do, I was a little undecided if I was going to leave this the same or if I was actually going to spray it. And I decided I am going to spray it. If we're going to do change, we're going to do change. Um, so I have Rust-Oleum spray paint, which I'm starting to lean more to. Uh, but this is a Kremlin spray paint that I really, really liked the last time I used, uh, used it. So I'm going to spray with this one first, and then I will follow up um, with the rest of them. And of course, cars are going by. Um, as I advised before, I live in an apartment complex. So I'll just start off a little with the spraying, and then I'll come back to you guys. This almost gives it like a bronze look but this is just I use this sort of like a primer um, just to let you know the whole rhyme and reason for using this okay so I have sprayed uh, the first coating on and I'm attempting to zoom in on it um, it looks pretty good close up this has an almost bronze look to it um but it's actually um on here it's reflecting this gold but it has almost a bronze look to it so i'm gonna let that dry for a couple of minutes it's supposed to be quick drying and then i'll go back and spray uh, the metallic the metallic white gold over it uh, i have another rust-oleum if i don't like this this particular gold uh, then I'll spray the other one okay so I I am very very I'm gonna take this off the mount I am very sorry about that finger I am very very pleased with the way that this came out this shows the detail of the actual frame uh, so well so i am extremely happy i've grouted 
this part. So now comes the fun part. I will be honest with you. This is the part of mosaic work that I actually despise. And it is the cleanup. So I just wanted to let you see uh, where I'm at now. But this is a simple, this, this particular mosaic is simple. The glass was already, the piece was already done. Like we know, we were just, we're revamping it. Um, so basically now I'm just going through and cleaning off uh, the glass. You basically have to do a couple of cleans in order to get it together. I did the very first cleaning. Um, I actually even took the little stir stick that I had and I um, I removed, removed some of the residue uh, with that just by scraping it and it made it a much easier uh, process. So now I'm just going back over with um extremely warm water and getting off the other parts it was it has been a lengthy process because normally with a mirror this size you wouldn't do it all in one day but i promised myself that i am going to get it done today um because i do want this video posted tonight and I need to start on some other things. Um, my oldest, um, which is my niece, she is having a baby. And I've been trying to not overwhelm them and let them live their life. But um, I guess you don't know what you want to do until somebody lets you know. So they pretty much let me know that I was going to be planning a baby shower. So um, I'm going to have a lot of things coming up because we're going to do a Tiffany and Company um, inspired baby shower. So um, I just wanted to touch back in, let you guys see where I was at. Um, once I get this clean to a certain point, I'm going to place it back in the frame. Okay, my love. So this is the end result of the lazy mirror that we've revamped, the lazy mosaic mirror. Um, I have to say that I am extremely pleased uh, with the end result. It turned out absolutely wonderful. Um, the actual grouting is showing up a little bit lighter than what it is, but it's just like a tan um, color. So it um, this was a all day project. Um, so the, tomorrow I took I'm off from work on Monday and Tuesday. So tomorrow I'm gonna get some of the other projects done uh, that I showed you. I want to thank you guys. Um, for coming through uh, today and spending time with me in 40 Pieces of Me. Um, I thank you for making me feel comfortable enough in order to um, share my story. Um, a lot of times we may have things that are happening in our lives and we're afraid to reveal it or tell it because we don't know how we will be looked at or how we will be judged. Um, I do want to make sure that I make two things perfectly clear uh, because I did decide to um, tell you about how 40 Pieces of Me was developed. Um, one thing we have to learn is that we can never be mad at anyone else for being exactly who they say they are. Um, we have to learn to respect and love 
everyone that we come across because we don't ever know what someone's story is. Um, I could be, uh, per se, they always say angry black woman. I could have turned out and just been really, really angry about it. Um, am I extremely fearful of people? Of course I am. But nothing that ever happened made me angry because I knew that that's what God ordered for me before birth. Um, so we have to respect the rights of others uh, and the lives that they choose. And we have to love them. I do not hate my ex. I want to make that clear. I just think that we should be perfectly honest about people uh, who we actually are and give people an opportunity to decide if they want to live a certain lifestyle with us. Um, I am not a victim. I am a survivor in everything in life. I want to make that extremely clear. God chose me for certain things that has happened in my life because the lady next door wouldn't have been able to handle it. And come out victorious like I am. Um, my sister may not have been able to handle it. And I'm just hypothetically speaking. So God knew exactly who should be in that situation. And I'm not the only one. There's a lot of others. Um, if I had not left North Carolina and moved to uh, Atlanta, I would have never knew that I had this gift burning inside of me. So I have to thank God. And I always say that he will never, ever, ever lead us to where he is unwilling to retrieve us from. Um, he sent me to Atlanta so I could learn another gift that I had that will take me probably a long, long way. So I am thankful for everything uh, that I have experienced. Um, if any of you live in the Atlanta area uh, and you're ever um, in, uh, I think it's Smyrna, Georgia, right outside of Atlanta, I want you guys to stop in uh, Toya Wright, Lil Wayne's ex-wife. I want you guys to stop in her shoe uh, boutique, Garb, Sh Garb Shoutique in Smyrna, Georgia. In that store, that opened up, this opened up a door for me where I actually created a piece of art uh, that's hanging in her store. I also have uh, mosaic mannequin heads in another uh, men's, uh, celebrity men's boutique in Atlanta um, called Moda 404. Um, so Everything wasn't all bad. I'm thankful and I'm blessed for everything uh, that happened. I thank you guys for being so supportive and always having kind words, even when you're telling me ways that I can do something better. Once again, my name is Malik Davis. If this is a DIY uh, slash keeping it real, uh, telling the truth, if this is something that you enjoy, please remember to hit the subscribe button. Uh, hit the alert button so that you can know when 40 pieces of me is uh, doing uh, different things. Once again, my name is Malik Davis. And today I actually told you where the 40 pieces of me originated from. Have an absolutely beautiful evening.